Hi guys, today I thought I'd bring you a video on these, uh, British issue leather jerkins. Uh, on the left here we have a First World War, uh, Great War example, and on the right we have a Second World War example. And I've got them here side by side to give you a bit of a comparison between the two. What I'm going to do is show, have a look at each of these individually and show you the details of them uh, so that you can see the difference between the First War issue jerkins and Second War issue. Um, there were vari variations on this uh, design during the Second World War, a camouflage version, which I don't have an example of, so this isn't comprehensive, uh, but it's an overview of the design and their use and uh, when they were introduced and so forth. So um, I'll move this one out of the way so we can have a bit of a, an easier look at this, the Great War example first, and uh, then we'll have a look at the Second World War example. So here we have an original Great War issue leather jerkin. These were first issued in the middle of 1915, I believe, uh, and obviously they are supposed to be a cold weather piece of clothing, um, but also they're a good working garment as well. They protect the uniform from excess wear as well. That's another feature of the design. Uh, they're wool lined, of course, and then you have the outer layer of leather, which means they're not only uh, warm, but they're also somewhat waterproof and windproof as well. So they, they're a good protective garment from that point of view. Prior to this, Animal skins had been used to make uh, waistcoats and so forth for the army to wear uh, over the uniforms in the winter months of 1415. Uh, but this was introduced, to, so by the winter of 1516, these were on issue. Uh, and they, this is a better design, uh, it's a more refined design, and uh, you didn't have the problems which led to the nicknames of the previous animal skin, um, cold weather clothing, uh, which was stinkers, because they, they weren't pleasant garments to wear. Uh, this is a much better design from that point of view. The Leather jerkin itself, the design goes way back. Um, it's uh, in in fashion. Uh, it goes way way back as a, a sort of leather, you know, the leather waistcoat design. Uh, but they were worn as working garments prior to the First World War, and you saw military use. A similar design to this was used by uh, the Royal Corps, Royal Corps of Sappers and Miners uh, when working on entrenchments and things. And the, from that point of view, the design is a very good one, and it's not surprising it was reintroduced for use in the Great War. We have uh, four leather buttons down the front. These are, I believe, leather covered wood. Only this one here is original. I've had to replace these. Uh, when this came to me, as you can see, well, you can see it's not in the best condition. There is uh, excessive wear down on this side here. But overall, it's it's solid. It's it's not a, not in too bad condition overall. There's just quite a bit of wear on the left hand lower side there. Otherwise, the leather is in quite good condition, especially considering its age. Uh, so I, I had to find replacements for the buttons here. Uh, that's one difference, of course, from Second War issue jerkins, which have the four-hole uh, button. These have these plain leather, uh, the plain leather type. If I move the mannequin around now, we can have a look at the back. And you can see here a little bit more damage at the back here. If I move the helmet up. You can see the leather's beginning to go at the top here. Uh, it's, it's dried out at some point, but I have put some treatment on it now, so it should be it should be preserved fairly well. Bit of a hole in here. But otherwise not in too bad condition. The interesting thing with Great War jerkins is they appear to be made much more of one of, of large sheets of leather. When we get to the Second World one you'll see there's more seams and things let in to, to use up smaller bits of leather, um, smaller bits of leather, excuse me. Uh, you can see one example of that here on the shoulder. There's a little triangle of leather been worked in there, uh, but otherwise this is large single sheets of leather um, for each part of the, of the jerkin. So uh, what I'll do now is uh, I'll take this off the mannequin, turn it inside out, and we can have a look at the interior details of the lining and so forth. So here we have the jerkin turned inside out, and you can see um, there's this grey uh, blanket lining material. It's quite a rough wool material used for the lining. The buttonholes are all worked in in leather, and here you have reinforcing pieces where the buttons go. And the buttons on these jerkins, this is the original button here, are attached with a ring, so they poke through a hole in the through the jerkin, through both sides of the leather, so the outer leather and then this reinforcing piece here, and then they're attached using a ring, as you can see there. Uh, the others, I've just, they didn't have a, a long enough shank, so I've just had to use a split pin to attach those, but it works, it's, it means it's visually, um, it, it means it's visually restored, if nothing else, uh, much as the buttons aren't the exact same design. But there we are. Um, the stitching is coming away a little bit on those, unfortunately. You can see, you might be able to see here, I'm not sure, there's a number two here, which I believe will be the size, size two. These were made in sizes one, two and three, I believe. And also very faintly just here, there appears to be a W broad arrow D stamp there. Sometimes you see it stamped on the leather, which means it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit easier to see, but it seems to have been stamped on directly onto the wool here. 
So uh, I'll bring up, bring the camera in a minute to get a still, a close up of the two markings there. To hopefully uh, you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly. You can see here a close up of the markings stamped inside the Great War era jerkin, and you can see the War Department stamp, where you can hopefully see that on the wall there, and the number two, which indicates size two. Um, so that is the the front, and we'll just turn it around now. It's pretty plain at the back, really, but the sides as well. You have reinforcement in the the, the arm openings there, you can see a leather reinforcing piece at the base there. Bring it around here. You can see that hole in the le leather at the back has gone all the way through to the wall. Uh, but yes, all lined in this this blanket material, which obviously makes it very warm. And these were often, often issued as a more practical um, re replacement for the great coat when on active service, because uh, particularly in the trenches and so forth, a long coat is not ideal. And also on the march um, and fighting, uh, you can effectively move in these there's no constriction in the arms or anything and they are still a, a good uh, body warmer as it were uh, in terms of wear and you can see on the other side here again the uh, reinforcing piece at the the bottom of the arm opening there but that is the the in interior of the um the first war era jerkin and here you can see a couple of period photographs of these in use during the first world war An interesting thing to note in this third photograph is the fact that the jerkins have been worn under the service dress jacket here, and this seems to have been fairly common practice during the Great War. And here we have the Second World War issue leather jerkin. Um, this is a very similar design, uh, slightly tailored in almost, slightly less baggy than the Great War examples. Uh, four hole buttons down the front. These are particularly dark, they're almost black. You do see these with anything from sort of a, a fairly light tan through chocolate brown, milk chocolate brown to this very dark colour. Just appears to be a variation. Visually, another difference is that up here you can see the separate panels at the shoulders. So that's been used there, although this one is made of quite large pieces of leather. You do see them with uh, other examples of these with um, pieces stitched in near the, near the, the hem. Uh, but otherwise a very similar design. Uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, it's a very much a case of that. And, and the jerkins serve very much the same purpose as a, a cold weather piece of clothing, uh, but also a working garment as well. It does protect your uniform to some degree. Um, there is a little bit of a misconception that these are a very much a late war item, and that's certainly not the case. They were definitely worn in France in 39-40 uh, in the winter uh, in France at the start of the war as a cold weather piece of clothing and I will put some photographs in the video here to show some examples of that. Here you can see some photographs of leather jerkins being worn by troops in France during the winter of 1939-40, obviously being worn against the cold. And here you can see the much more synonymous uh, images of the jerkin being worn late in the war in Germany, again as a cold weather garment. So I'll turn this round now and we can have a look at the back. Um, you can see here, again, this one uh, is made of, of larger pieces of leather here. Uh, most of the smaller uh, pieces used to fill in are up on the shoulders. Um, but again, it's, this one is in much better condition. In fact, it's in very, very nice condition, although there is some wear around the, the edge at the bottom there. Um, we'll have a look at the inside of this in a moment. We'll have a look at the, the labels and so forth and details that make it slightly different again from its Great War counterpart. Um, stand up straight. There we go. Um, but yes, so this is the Second World War example, and as I say, by this period, uh, obviously you've moved away from the leather buttons to these uh, four hole examples here. Um, but I'll take it off the mannequin now, turn it inside out, and we can have a look at the interior lining and the labels and so forth. Okay, so the first major difference is that this particular example is lined in uh, khaki serge as opposed to the more of the, the rough blanket material used in the, in the Great War example. Otherwise, interior details are very similar. You have the leather reinforcement for the buttonholes on this side, and then leather reinforcing pieces on this side for the buttons to be stitched through in this case, of course. The design in that regard is very, very similar. Uh, so it's changed the lining material there. Uh, if we bring the uniform bring it around here, you can see again, we have the leather reinforcement uh, in the, uh, the base of the arm openings there to help hold that, steam to, uh, that seam together there. Obviously, if you're doing manual labour in this, there's a tendency for, if you're doing anything involving your shoulders or your upper arms, for that seam to pull apart. So the leather reinforcing helps deal with that. We have the label here, uh, Jerkin, Jerkins number two leather, size number two, uh, which is five foot seven to five foot 10, uh, 37 to 43 chest, so my size. And this example is dated 1943 and we'll bring the camera in now have a quick uh, closer look at the label you can see a close-up photograph of the details of the label showing the 1943 date there and the size and so forth 
Moving around the back, there's nothing special to look at here. It's just, the, again, the plain wool lining. There's a little bit of moth in here, just a couple of nips, but otherwise in very nice condition. As I say, there were also uh, camouflage examples of these made, um, and that will be shown on the label uh, if you have one. Uh, but often the camouflage material, which was just sprayed onto the leather, uh, wears away and you'll, it'll just look like a normal jerkin, particularly as the leather can be different hues anyway. Um, you, you, you know, the label will give away the fact of whether it's a camouflage example or not. Um, but that's a look at the interior of the uh, Second World War uniform. So there we have an overview looking at the Great War and Second World War issue leather jerkins. Hope you found it interesting looking at the differences between the two. Uh, this design would live on and would be manufactured post-war in PVC and they're very common to find on the market, the PVC jerkins. Uh, basically exactly the same design but made in faux leather, made of PVC. And then more recently for use with combat uniform, a zip-up uh, modernised version of the jerkin was introduced, again made in, in faux leather material. It was a working garment. Not sure how common it was to see them issued but they were made. That's a topic for another video though, I don't have any in my collection at present of either the PVC or the later zip-up version, so perhaps if I pick some of those up we might do a future video uh, looking at the continuation of the development of these. But uh, that's it for now, so I do hope you found that interesting, and uh, if you like my content and would like to see more then please consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed or newly subscribing, make sure you hit the notification button, that's the way you'll be notified of me uploading future videos. I also have a Facebook and an Instagram page, which is a good place to see photographs or get in touch with me if you wish to. I'll put links to both of those in the description, as I always do. But uh, that is it for now. So until next time, bye for now.